Greetings all, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about finding spatial data to use in augmented reality with GIS, with a specific focus on the Argus Solutions app and system, which is a wonderful way of exploring your world with augmented reality. It's exciting, it's cutting edge. How do you find this kind of data? Well, I have a whole blog with a colleague of mine called the Spatial Reserves Data Blog. And in that blog, we talk about how to find data and how to assess it, how to know if it's any good. Here, in this specific location, I'm going to be examining city and county in the USA data sets, but you could use these same techniques to find data for your own location that you can then use in these augmented reality systems. In this case, as you saw, I was looking at parcels a moment ago, and now I'm looking at streets. I've got a geodatabase that's served online with various portal technologies such as ArcGIS Hub and other open data portals that allow you and I as data consumers to load these data sets from these oftentimes rest endpoints into our GIS systems, but also in these augmented reality apps and other systems that use the same sort of geotechnology. Here I'm looking at light poles. I've got a geodatabase behind every one of these layers. These are feature layers, and so I can display them in the field. I can display them in the office. Here I've got the type of wattage. I've got the type of lamp in each one of these poles maintained by, in this case, a municipality. I'm also looking at data from the county where this municipality is located. Now I've got, oh wow, look at this. I've got the ability to pan and zoom around inside ArcGIS Online. I'm testing the features out in ArcGIS Online before I load them into my augmented reality app. That way I know if I've got enough data, if I've got some attributes that I can query out in the field, etc. Now I've got signalized intersections. I'm looking at traffic lights and various things. For example, a, a, a school ahead warning light. In other words, the one that flashes to tell you to slow down because there's a school. Here I've got the signs. I've got all the signs. Remember that old song? And the sign said, you got to have a membership card to get inside. Well, here's signs. I've got, oh, this one's 30 miles per hour sign. I've got all the, these thousands of signs at my fingertips. One of the things you've got to think about before you go out in the field is, is the feature layer of sufficient density are the features in it of sufficient density where you're not having to walk miles or kilometers to get to the next feature. In this case, I want to use a variety of points, lines, and polygons. Here's floodplains polygons. If I only use those, it would be admittedly a long way before I got to the next floodplain. But I'm using a variety of features at a variety of different scales. And here I've got the storm drains and intake water system, storm drains being the most prominent thing, but sewer lines and sewer uh, outlets and that sort of thing. So I've got that just about in every community at a sufficient density, once again, for me to actually go out in the field and see different features as I'm wandering around. Now here I'm looking at the different portals that the data is served on. Here you can see Jefferson County, Colorado, the wonderful folks there in the GIS department are serving up their data. Now oftentimes you have to dig a little deep to find out the actual URL, the REST endpoint URL oftentimes, where you can actually get to the feature layer. The reason why is because much of the data for particular political areas is oftentimes served to the general public, who really admittedly oftentimes are not GIS people, right? They just want to see parcels and street signs and things like that on a map. So you got to dig a little deeper into what I'm looking at here, the metadata for example, the crashes, the accidents in this particular, this is kind of a grim set of data, but it's important, right? We want to have people be safe out there. And this particular street segment, as you can see here, there's all kinds of accidents that have occurred over the last, in this case, about a 15 year period. I've got the dates, I've got uh, the injuries or fatalities. I have the ages of the drivers and what happened, who was on the scene. Is it uh, the state uh, 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 sheriffs? Is it the local city police, etc.? Here's where it gets even more exciting, folks. What if you also collected your own data out in the field? Then you can look at it in the Argus augmented reality system. In my case, I went to a school campus and you could easily do this with your students on their own campuses. 
light poles, trees, bicycle racks, recycling bins, anything human built or in nature. Why would I want to do that? Well, then I could be out in the field and actually see the data on my mobile device, on my smartphone that I've actually collected with, in my case, Survey123, but you can collect it in a variety of other means inside the ArcGIS online system as well. Then I can look at it in the field with my app. Wow, this is fantastic. Again, these data sets are at your fingertips. They're useful, they're wonderful, and this is how you set up and think about the kinds of data that you want to use when you go out in the field and load the augmented reality app, in this case, Argus Solutions. How do you get the data into the app? That's gonna be the subject of another video is how to get the data actually into the app. But I want you to explore with me for a, a little bit what is happening behind the scenes for you to look at, okay, where am I gonna find the data in the first place? Thanks, and for more information about where to find data, see our Spatial Reserves data blog. Thanks, we'll see you out in the field.